This is Twit. Can you kind of introduce yourself? Uh, because your life didn't start off with rockets in space. It started off, well, at least as an adult in finance and banking, which is not always the usual route to get into this, although increasingly it probably will be as we figure out ways to make money there. But how did you get into space? Well, thank you, Rod. And that's a, that's a great question. Uh, my interest started back in an early age, thinking about, you know, the economic challenges that a country like Ecuador, or a third world nation faces and what it's needed for economic development so we can escape our problems. Um, so that led me to study economics, political science and develop a career in banking. Um, afterwards, when I decided to make the transition, I was looking at to see how can we use technologies to definitely help solve solve these big problems that we're facing? And because the big question is competitiveness, you know, how do we make an economy competitive and what technology can we do it? And we saw that space definitely had like the biggest impact that it touched every aspect of the local economy. So we, that's where we said, if space is the next big thing, how can we play a role and what can Ecuador offer in space to be part of that. And its geographic location was pretty unique to see what type of space activities we can do. And, and that's the reason that we decided to, uh, to start with Leviathan Space to start thinking about if commercial companies are going to be looking to expand and grow, they're going to be looking for new alternatives. And that's where we think that a private spaceport can definitely be something to create value in a complex supply uh, space supply chain. And, and that's how we started um, back in 2018. And we've been working towards uh, advancing that and thinking about how do we make a whole ecosystem that can definitely create value that way. So, uh, yeah, and I want to talk more about the spaceport in a few minutes. Um, but the other thing that's remarkable about, well, there's a lot of things that's remarkable about you, but you, you started a National Space Society chapter in Ecuador a city called Guayaquil. And, you know, most people who start a National Space Society chapter, you know, they get together, they have dinner, they chit chat, they, they page through Ad Astra. They're enthusiasts. But in Ecuador, the National Space Society chapter has become something, because of you, largely, of a force of nature and actually uh, creating change. But l let's talk about how the chapter started and some of your activities, if you would. So we were very excited about the National Space Society as an organization. We participated in the ISDC, the conference that they have every year back in 2019. Uh, we presented a paper on a, a very exciting topic, space taxes. <laughs> mm. So, so it, it was definitely about this uh, thought provoking process uh, of, of thinking about how property rights and taxes should work in space to, to help grow the, the space economy. And, but I definitely saw that there was a community and we definitely wanted to, to have uh, the young kids in Ecuador, a place where they can relate, where, where they can find their own community and where they can get involved and where we can also advocate, you know, for, for space in Ecuador. And so that's what we're looking to create in our city, the city of Guayaquil, uh, this group. And so we were able to have a voice for everybody. And in our first meeting, which was great, we were able to have over a hundred people show up trying to see how they could get involved. And even the United States Consul General uh, was able to give some opening remarks and talk about space. So he gave a little weight about uh, the importance of space and, and all the things that we could be part of. And, and, and I think that's an important part of, uh, of this conversation is making people think that they can get involved and they can contribute. Well, yeah. So I did want to follow up, Robert, because you, you had mentioned, uh, you know, the, the, I guess the, the inspiration <laughs> or the, or the impetus of, of Ecuador and space, uh, there in that, uh, that discussion. But uh, of course on June uh, of 2023, I think it was the June 21st, like the first day of summer, that's when NASA announced that Ecuador had become an official signatory for its Artemis Accords. And I'm wondering what that path is like. Is that like a tough sell? Uh, to to the folks in Ecuador to say, hey, you can get involved in this and here's what you could do? Or um, had it been going on for, you know, uh, years in the background uh, to get to that point where um, where this official agreement, you know, uh, really crystallizes uh, to expand on Ecuador's role, not just in space, but in lunar exploration, you know, with NASA's program to go to the moon? 
So as we were engaging, uh, the Ecuadorian government talked about space and uh, the use of a spaceport and what other activities we could do. Artemis was uh, uh, where we thought a low hanging fruit, fruit, something that we could definitely be involved in and create a lot of value by, by becoming part of. So we had been in talks with the government by 18 months before June 21st. Mm -hmm. And uh, we were able to get the support from Professor Greg Autry from Thunderbird School of Global Management. Also, Mike Gold from Redwire was also very instrumental in helping us and providing advice. So we had to engage the Ministry of Foreign Relations, Ministry of Defense, Ministry of Transportation, all government agencies. And we had started first doing some webinars. You know, having the conversation about space law, you know, and, and treaties and, 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 and what are the opportunities for that? After that, we were able to transition uh, where we had one of the top uh, environmental leaders and opinion leaders in Ecuador, Ines Manzano, write a very important article, uh, opinion piece uh, regarding Artemis and what that meant. So, so now we were in a major newspaper talking about the subject. After that, we had to continue, you know, that level of engagement uh, with the government officials, and they had to validate, make sure what it meant regarding a treaty, a bilateral treaty with the U.S., and, and we had to also explain all this process about what what space, what was happening in space, because people. We're, we're not familiar with that. So, so that level of advocacy took some, definitely some time. Mm -hmm. And uh, we were able to get a lot of support, like uh, different universities in Ecuador in being advocates also for the process. Lots of different companies in the U.S. We were able to get letters of support towards the Ecuadorian government, telling them that space was important and that Artemis should definitely be a path to follow. So, so that level of support from uh, the local community, the international community, and then I would say the excitement of uh, the Department of State, the U.S. Embassy and the U.S. Consulate in Ecuador, you know, about what it meant in amplifying a bilateral relation, uh, we definitely saw lots of doors opening towards uh, what Artemis can mean. So when we had the final pitch to the Minister of, uh, of Foreign Relations, uh, it, it was exciting because mm -hmm. we had everything already, you know, signed by everybody, reviewed by the legal department, all the other ministers were okay with it. So it was just the final decision to see if we do, we do the sign or no sign type of type of event. <laughs> deal or no deal. Exactly. So 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 we had a, a an important lunch uh, with him at uh, Universidad San Francisco de Quito. And uh, we had all the you know university officials, you know, our our allies and friends there. And we were just pitching to him, you know, th this is the moment, you know, we can yeah. definitely be, be doing something with space. And, and, and one of our allies, Roque Sevilla, who was able to coordinate the meeting was, was also present. Uh, and uh, other members, Nelson Kim, had been instrumental in supporting uh, all the local efforts for, for this to happen. And, and then, you know, he said, okay, let, let's sign, you know, <laughs> after, uh, after, after such an intense drill dur during lunch, he was like, if there's no objections, I don't, I don't see a reason why not. And that, and that was like, the case that we we're trying to make, you know, it's a no risk situation. It's, mm -hmm. a, it's all positive, you know, about all the things that can happen if we, if we follow this path. So he took a very valiant risk, I would say, because public opinion at the time was like, you know, we have better things to worry than space. You know, we have other priorities, political situation, you know, that Ecuador was going through. Maybe space was not something that was high on the agenda. But the good thing was that we were able to do such a good work to have everything ready that he only had to say, let's do it and, and let's sign. So he said, OK, let's sign. Let's figure out uh you know, sometime in the next couple of months to, to do something about it. And then I was saying, well, you're going next week to Washington because you have an <laughs> agenda already. How about if we just sign it there, you know, next week? So he was like, well, do I have the time in the agenda? So, so I definitely we pushed him there and he <laughs> acquiesced. And, and then he, we were able to talk to NASA and the State Department, you know, and they said, okay, great, let's have a meeting. And we were able to, to have the ceremony at the Ecuador embassy in DC. And he was wonderful because at the same time there was a, a delegation from ecuador businessmen there from the american chamber of commerce and uh, we had the minister of foreign relations we had the prime minister uh the, the minister of uh, production and ambassador yvonne Baki, uh who was playing a huge role in being our our big supporter in space driving this topic so so when you see the picture you see you know the top leadership from ecuador being there with nasa and the state department so so that was a very very powerful thing that we were able to achieve
Yeah, we've got a photo of that on John on line thirty four there at that at that link. That's the uh, the official photo from from the signing. It's interesting that you mention we have we we have other things that are priorities. You know, when you're discussing because that is like the perennial uh, uh, discussion or debate over whether anyone should invest in space science or space exploration. It's that we've got other, so we've got potholes in the street, on the ground, well, you know. Uh, and, and let me just add, we've been hearing that in the U.S. since about 1964. Yeah. Those yeah. arguments were going on right down to protests taking uh, taking place outside the, the gates of the Marshall Space Flight Center and, and other NASA facilities. So that question never goes go. away. So Yeah, there's the there, picture. Yeah, There's that photo. Did you get to keep a pen, uh, Robert? From the signing, well, is that? <laughs> well, let, let me tell you that something. Before the event, I went to the NASA headquarters office in DC, and they have a NASA store. Yeah, so I was able shop, to yeah. the, the gift shop. So I was able to get uh, six different pins. So I <laughs> so that said Artemis. So I took them to the event and just laid them on the table so they can be like you know like uh, blessed by by this event. Right, right. <laughs> can you just breathe on each of them? Maybe enough. <laughs> and we were able to give them to all the folks that really work hard to make this happen. So, so it, it was great that, that, that our top friends and allies were able to get afterwards. They were not there in person for, for the ceremony, but at least they were able to keep the momentum. So, so mm -hmm. with, with, now, with that. I, I have to make a point here, Tarek, because, because you and I, you more than me, but we both are constantly chasing our tails because of our workload and so forth. And I know Robert's a very busy guy too. He's got a young child. You know, there's a lot of things going on in your life, Robert. But what impressed me so much about watching you operate is that level of planning. So thinking ahead, because I would have been there with a broken pencil and, uh, you know, an Etch-a-Sketch or something saying, uh, I forgot to bring the pens, but here, sign this thing anyway. <laughs> and you thought ahead and got enough pens that everybody, you know, had a memento, which, of course, you know, it's a small thing to take advantage of at the moment, seemingly, but in two months, the president's going to pull that pen out of his pocket and think, oh, yeah, that was kind of fun. That's a cool thing. I had to call that Robert guy and nominate him to be the first Ecuador's first astronaut on the moon or something. <laughs> so, you know, this is very smart. So sorry, Tarek. I know you had a follow up. I just wanted no, to. Well, I guess the only other in. follow up, and, and this is something that, that Robert, you mentioned actually a couple times leading up to our discussion about uh, the Accords, but you, you, you mentioned Ecuador's location. You mentioned the discussions about a possible spaceport. And for uh, a lot of our listeners, they may not like com link the location of Ecuador with yes. a spaceport. Although, you know, we do know that Europe operates um, out of French Guiana and their, their spaceport there. But what is it about Ecuador's location that, that kind of lends itself to the possibility of a spaceport that would make sense to either uh, uh, in a, you know, like a native space program or uh, to other folks looking uh, for uh, a boost, if you will, to, to get into space uh, uh, based on, on where you are on, on the planet. We definitely think that Ecuador, it's a magnificent place to do all kinds of different space activities. We definitely have a comparative advantage based on the geographic location due to the speed of the Earth, the rotation. Mm -hmm. That gives an additional boost for rockets to be launched. Uh, as you're, 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 you're close to the equator. We are yeah. right on the yeah, equator. Yeah. We're latitude zero. We're <laughs> right there. We're the, we're like, the, the we're the chosen park people park to do a space. <laughs> has the word equator in it. So, yeah. Uh -huh. We're the chosen people to go to space, as we might say. Uh, so we've been blessed by this location. And, and this image here that you see, I don't, I don't know if you can see this background. Mm -hmm. This is the Cotopaxi tracking station, which was a NASA tracking station from the 1950s that was built to support the early satellite communications and the Apollo missions at the time. And, and, and this has been working for since, since that time. And, you know, it's like going to a museum. So you have communications, you have launch opportunities. And another exciting aspect is reentry. You know, as you bring things back from space, they can come from the west to east of the Pacific Ocean and they can land on the coast of Ecuador and be recovered. Capsules mm -hmm. and other types of vehicles that could be the case. And then we start thinking about Ecuador is such a small country, you know, but at the same time, it's so geographically diverse that people can come here and train to become an astronaut because they have lots of different challenges. They can climb volcanoes, go to the jungle, scuba diving, lava tubes in the Galapagos Islands. And it's also an amazing place to do science. 
You know, it's such a rich ecosystem here. Thousands of plants, thousands of varieties per square kilometer that, that happen here. So if you want to replicate those ecosystems abroad, you know, Ecuador is a place to learn about how do we create life in Mars, the moon and beyond. So, so it's just the perfect test bed, I think, for, for, for doing space activities. And, and hopefully we can create that so more people can come here and operate. Hey, if you enjoyed this clip, be sure to check out This Week in Space. You can find us on your favorite podcast app or see the link in the description below. See you there.